Apple announces two new iPads for the love or hate of many. Nokia follows the device announcements with two new phablets and a tablet. And HTC wants to build a smartwatch that's not a gimmick, or so they say. I'm Jaime Rivera. And how about if we remove the word smart from the word watch while they figure that one out? This is Pocket Now Daily. You know, there's so much official news to start off today that we're going to actually begin with the rumors because Qualcomm is apparently already working on a new variant of the Snapdragon 800 processor. And the reason why this is hot is because it's apparently going to make it 10% faster and 10% more efficient. And yes, this is big news. The Snapdragon 800 processor is one of the hottest things to happen to mobile in the last coming years. So much so that I've come to the point where I will not buy another smartphone if it does not include a Snapdragon 800 processor. It is that good, so let's see how the rumors go. Let's continue with some rumors as HTC is apparently working on an Android-powered smartwatch and according to Peter Chow, he really wants to make this a non-gimmicky product as pretty much most of the smartwatches are at the moment and apparently the company was already working on a smartwatch along with Microsoft powered by Windows and for some reason that did not happen at all. But anyway, stay tuned for the rumors. Let's see exactly what we get because it doesn't really matter how beautiful they make this watch. It's about how useful the watch will be. Moving over to some official news, Google has just purchased the French company called FlexiCore, and if this does not ring a bell, this is the company behind Droid Booster, a service that intends to make your Java performance a lot faster and more optimized. So we could expect for the next version of Android to be much faster and much better. Apparently the team is already integrating with the Android team, so much so that Google paid $23 million for this service alone. So it must be worth every penny, or at least I hope. Now let's talk about Nokia and the news that a lot of you have been waiting for is the company has just announced two new phablets, the 1520 and the 1320, and then a new tablet, which is the 2520. And in the case of the 1520, this device pretty much powers everything that we want in Android on Windows phones. So this is really a beast of a phone. And yeah, it is also a beast of a phone when it comes to size, since this is a six inch display, which would mean this is bigger than the HTC One Max, which is probably just too big to handle. And in the same same case, the 1320 is just as big, only obviously not as powerful, but the price tag is really compelling. Now, in the case of the 2520, we have a Windows RT tablet. There's not really much to talk about here. All these products are going to AT&T, except for the 1320, which is specified only for Europe and Asia. So stay tuned for the rumors as to when we're actually getting these products launched and some interesting pricing since the unlocked price of the 1520 is kind of out of the ballpark. And finally, for the hot news of the day, yes, we get two new iPads. First we get the iPad Air, and I did not get that name wrong. It's not iPad 5 or not the new iPad. It is the iPad Air, but it is pretty much a bloated iPad mini in design with better specifications like an A7 processor, the M7 coprocessor, uh, new radios, etc., etc. Great specifications and the same starting price as the previous iPad, which is great. We also get an iPad mini with a retina display, and the reason why I'm not smiling is because even though this is a smaller iPad Air, in every single way, specifications and everything, it is the same tablet, only smaller, but it's starting prices at $399, it's $400 for this tablet. And yes, we still get the iPad 2 after three years as the entry-level bigger iPad, and the old iPad mini from last year remains as the entry-level iPad mini, so these two new tablets are the higher-end models that also do not include Touch ID, which we really can't understand why. But that leads me to the question of the day. Are you interested in any of these iPads? Is any of these iPads your next tablet? In my particular case, you know, I wanted that iPad mini with the Retina display, but for the price tag of almost two Nexus 7s, it is really not compelling for me anymore, up to the point where I'm actually thinking of the iPad Air, even with its crazy name, or probably just going for the Nexus 7 altogether and saving a ton of money. So leave us a comment down below. Where do you stand? And friends, as always, you know the drill. If you want to get the news earlier before this video is filmed, make sure you follow us on Pocketnow.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. You can also follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I am Jaime Rivera. Thank you very much for watching. We will see you tomorrow.